In this video, we will look at Cisco Genie. So Genie is um, a collection of um, tools. It's a Python library created by Cisco engineers, and it's available for public use as well. Genie is uh, really helpful with uh, parsing device um, output. So with Genie, um, all the information comes back in a JSON structure, so we don't have to use any regexes to pass the information. You can find out more about Genie on pubhub.devnetcloud.com. Installation is pretty simple. If you go to installation, you need to have a Pi ATS library installed. That's another library available by Cisco. And then uh, once you have Pi ATS, you can do pip install Genie, and that will install Genie on the, on the local machine. It's recommended to, to use a virtual environment. So once you have virtual environment set up, just activate it and then install Pi ATS and PIP. So Genie requires a testbed file to connect to the device. So if you look in the documentation, you will see that they have given a sample testbed file where it's a YAML file with key value pairs. And you can have device and then you can give a device name you can configure an alias for it and then give it credentials and how to connect to the device if it's ssh or telnet and if it needs a different port um, the format the new format is a little bit different from this so this has been deprecated the tacax login section and it's moved to credentials default and then username and password so I will be creating a testbed file um, with the new format and I'll show you what it looks like. So I'm using um, a script to create my testbed file. I have two devices in EVNG and there is nothing configured on these devices. As you can see, there is nothing um, configured. And if I execute my script with the lab name, which is called Genie in um, EVNG. So if I run, at the moment it's not showing the uh, topology name, it's just showing legacy in the URL. Um, but that's my topology, uh, genie.unl. And if I run this, it creates a testbed file for the two devices. And if we look at the testbed file, so this is a new format for the credentials at the top where we can give it default username and password and enable password. And then it has the information how it needs to connect to those two, two devices in EVNG. There is nothing configured on the devices. So before I uh, configure OSPF, I will um, take an initial snapshot of the devices. So what I can do is I just type genie learn OSPF, give it the testbed file name and the directory name where I want this output to be saved. So hyphen hyphen output, no OSPF. And uh, what Genie will do is we can see it's created a, a directory, no OSPF with some initial files. So the connection files are where Genie is um, trying to connect to the devices just to confirm it can reach the devices and it's just running some basic commands it's going into enable mode and then terminal length zero terminal width zero and show version and if we look at the ospf console file there is nothing here but shortly genie will uh, populate these files with whatever information it gets back from the device so we can see on the console that it's executed all those commands. So now we have the initial snapshot. Um, we can see there is nothing much configured on the devices under OSPF. 
And this is the basic config I have, which I will just go ahead and copy paste into the devices. So this is for R1. So now we have OSPF configured. I will go ahead and take a second snapshot after we have OSPF. So same command using the same test paired file and then output in the OSPF directory. And Genie will do the same thing where it will connect to the device, run the initial connection test, and then it will um, run the OSPF state commands where it will collect all the information related to OSPF. So we will see all that information in the new OSPF directory. So the two console files. And it's just finished processing. And we can see that we have OSPF files as well. So what I can do now is I can just take a diff. So I, if I do genie diff on no OSPF directory and OSPF directory, it will create some diff files. So it's created two diff files, one for R1 and one for R2. And we can see that it's populated those files with all the OSPF information. So this is the state of OSPF after we have configured. So Genie is really helpful with before making a change, take a snapshot, make a change, take another snapshot, or if there is something broken, if you have a good snapshot, you can compare it with a broken one and it will clearly show what's been changed.